STV, votre télé. Benjamin Mokanjo, Clinton J, and Christian Basogok have been left out from the first official 23 man squad list of Clarence Sedov. Who then are the chosen 23? Find out in a moment. Plus, in less than 24 hours, Muslims around the world would be celebrating the feast of the Ram. Preparations intensify as markets were overflowed, most clean, and dishes carefully chosen. Those are my list stories, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening and thanks for joining me. I am Henry Wana at the Anchor in Douala. We begin this newscast in sport, whereby Clarence Sedov and Patrick Clovet have caught up 23 players to play against Comoros come September 8, 2018, with two new players on board and the absence of Christian Basogok and Christ, uh, Christian Basogok as well as Benjamin Mokanju have been notified. Meanwhile, no local base player is featured on the list. John Paul Sama read through the list and now present to us. In the 23-man shortlist of the new management team, three regular names during the last regime are nowhere to be found, as the 2017 AFCON best player Christian Basogok is absent in this list, as well as fellow compatriots Benjamin Mukanjo, who was the golden boy and captain of the Lions under Hugo Bruce. Perhaps he hasn't caught the attention of Clarence Sidoff and co. One other regular in the Lions den, Clinton J. Moore, did not also make the cut, adding to a list of many absentees from this 23-man list. Some new players have caught the eyes of Sidorf and Clovet. Jerome Junior Ongene, who currently plays for Red Bull Salzburg on loan from Stuttgart, and 24-year-old Adrian Tameze of Nice will be testing life in the Lions' den for the first time when they take on cameras come September 8. Paul's George Depp has more been caught up to the camp, after having played for the French under 18 to under 20 side and currently plies his trade with Wolfsburg in Germany. The notable comeback to the Lions Den is English based defender Gaetan Bong. The 30 year old who plays for Brighton and Hove Albion returns to the Lions Den for a second time following his last call up in 2010. Idris Carlos Kamini is back amongst the goalkeeping names with over 70 caps under his belt for the Lions and joins Andre Onana and Fabrice Ondoa at the goalkeeping compartment. The two Dutch tacticians on their first official list have kept faith with some old names like Fai Collins, Oyongo Bitolo, Zambo Angisa, Vincent Bubakar, as well as Chupo Moting amongst other top players to defend the colors of the nation against Comoros as they prepare for the 2019 African Cup of Nations which they've already qualified for by virtue of being the host nation. Worth noting is the fact that no local base player has been called up to the men's senior national team. Still in sport, but this time around in brief, whereby the eight final round matches of the 2018 Challenge Cup of Cameroon played over the weekend was full of shocks and surprises. As current title holder, new stars of Douala got eliminated two goals to one by Edin Spor of Leki. Panthers Sportive Dundee bundled out UMS of Loom from the race following a 3 2 victory. Union of Douala trashed Canon of Yaoundé three goals to one to stay in contention, while Renaissance of Ngumo humiliated Federal of Noon six goals to nothing. The draws for the quarterfinal is scheduled for Wednesday, August 22 in Yaoundé. Now let's talk something else. Territorial Administration Minister Paul Atanganji has called on administrative and security officers in the Northwest region to do everything possible to ensure a hitch free 2018 presidential election. He made the plea while chairing a security meeting recently in Bamenda. Lobebe report. Funds have already been allocated by the President of the Republic to reconstruct offices of divisional officers that have been destroyed in the northwest and southwest regions in the course of the ongoing Anglophone crisis. This information was disclosed by the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, after visiting the offices of the divisional officers for Bali and Bafut that recently suffered as in attacks. I wanted to tell the population is that the head of state, His Excellency Paul Bia, has provided funds to rehabilitate the Jews' offices in the Northwest and the Southwest, which were burned down by the terrorists. 
and the funds are already available and in the next the coming days uh, at least the rehabilitation exercise will start but we want to call on the population to collaborate with the forces of law and order because most of these terrorists are staying in our houses and we are keeping them Minad Boss has also condemned these acts of vandalism perpetrated by these unknown individuals. I think it's very, very unfortunate that these terrorists, whom I can say is just a small minority, think that they can take the stage hostage and perpetrate these acts of vandalism. This is the judge's office in Bafut. Uh, this is an administrative office providing services for the local population. When you come and destroy the office of the duo, what is the kind of message you are passing? So I think that that is why we have always said that the terrorists will be trapped. They will have no hiding place. The message is very, very clear. And I tell you that I've spoken to the population, and the population are totally against this form of violence and this act of vandalism. Structure that would soon be hosting the divisional officer for Bali, already under construction, shall also benefit from these funds. As an attacks, especially on government structures, has taken the lead in the ongoing Anglophone crisis with administrative buildings and government institutions targeted. Let we stay in Bamenda to continue talking about the recent visit of uh, the territorial minister, Paul Atanganji. Shortly after that, he, he chaired a meeting with security officials as well as administrative heads. Let's get the verdict of that meeting. According to the Minister of Territorial Administration, Paul Atanganji, the northwest region of Resent has been calm with everything being under control. He made this declaration after chairing a security meeting in the northwest region, attended by administrators and top ranking security officers, aimed at evaluating the security situation in the region ahead of the 2018 presidential elections. The uh, meeting was scheduled following the high instructions from the head of state, President Paul Bia who asked me to make an evaluation of the security situation in the region. Globally, I can tell you that the situation is under control. The governor and the administrative authorities are doing a wonderful job. And the head of state told me to extend his encouragement to the forces of law and order, defense forces, and administrative authorities who have done everything despite all the odds to put, maintain calm and a serene atmosphere in the region. We have major challenges, and as you know, that the most important challenge will be the forthcoming uh, uh, presidential elections. Uh, the message is clear. The head of state has asked me to tell the governors that they have to accompany ELECAM. ELECAM is an independent organization which is charged of organizing the elections. So uh, globally, what do we do? We give them logistics and we provide security. And that is one that has been the main topic of the discussions, how to accompany Elecam in the process. The minister has also called on those who are still hiding in the bushes to come out and surrender their weapons, for the state is ready to pardon them. So you have to lay down your weapons. If you are a prodigal son, you don't have any condition, just put down the weapons, come, report yourself to the administrative authorities. Instructions have been given. They know what to do, because if you don't do at the end of the day, you are arrested and you are in for 30, 40, 50 years imprisonment. I don't think any person would like to stay in prison for 40 or 50 years because those are things which are linked to the law against terrorism. Administrative authorities and defense forces have also been encouraged to do everything possible to ensure a hitch free presidential elections despite the security challenges the region is experiencing. Professor Maurice Kamto, flag bearer of the Cameroon Renaissance Movement Party CRM, has concluded his five day tour to the West region ahead of the October 7th presidential election. Let's have him make an appraisal at the end of his tour to the West region. Peaceful change in a country means the involvement of each and every one. Uh, it, it is a combat for every Cameroonian, Cameroonian citizen. That's why I, 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 I appeal to them to mobilize, to go and vote comes October the 7th. It is crucial. Even if you are a little bit sick, please do an effort to go and cast your vote. Because uh, uh, depending on that vote would be the victory or the failure. And I'm quite confident that Cameroonians are now mobilized to go and bring the change to the country. I will not succeed alone. I count on everyone. It is a common fight. It is a common, uh, you know, victory 
I need. And that's why I'm submitting myself and my program to all Cameroonians so that they know me better, they know my program better, and they are convinced they can be sure, that, reassured that I'm a faithful politician. I'm not uh, involved in politics. I'm not now leading a political party because I want to negotiate a particular position. Otherwise, I would have uh, uh, stayed in the government. I, I, you know, I have resigned myself from the government. No one kicked me out of the government. So if I'm here, it is just because the country is in very poor shape, very bad shape. And as a Cameroonian, I cannot just fool my hands and look at it and not do anything. That's why I want to bring my faithful and genuine contribution to the change we need in this country. Aristide Ekambi is the new president of the Littoral Bureau of the Cameroon Journalist Trade Union. He emerged surprisingly after a consensus was reached by the head of the two contesting lists during an election that took place yesterday in Douala. Peter Sose report. Aristide Ekambi now heads the Littoral Regional Bureau of the Cameroon Journalist Trade Union. Though unexpected, he is ready for the challenge. There is a lot of frustration in the union. We have to sit together, talk and make peace. Then we will look into the different manifestos and merge them. Two lists headed by the now outgone president, Nassis Um and Charles Fongang, respectively, were due to contest in Sunday's elections. But on pool day, a protest breaks out as the electorate all registered members of the trade union wait in frustration. <laughs> Upon resumption, tradition prevails. There will be no vote. As it has always been the case, a consensus will be reached by the leaders of both lists. The consensus came during the last meeting we had yesterday to prepare the elections. Uh, an idea comes like that and it was proposed to all the contestants to go and discuss with their team with their team and later on come back in the morning to discuss and that, that's what we did this morning the kambi led bureau is made up of 16 members and three advisors from all sectors of the media the new team has been accepted by all however some members continue to frown over the sidelining of the general assembly in the consensual negotiations Muslim faithfuls are advised to avoid getting themselves into debt because they want to buy a ship for the celebration of the Feast of Sacrifice. Imams also advise that Muslims should kill their ship before midday on the day of the feast. John Possama report. As the clock ticks down to the celebration of the Feast of the Ram, Muslim faithfuls are expected to prepare physically and spiritually for this day. They are encouraged to fast and pray 10 days before the Feast of Sacrifice and especially on the ninth day, which is the day of the Arafat, where it is believed that they are purified from all their sins while sharing the little they have with their neighbors. We have to be concentrated in adoration with Almighty Allah. We have to be kind, be kind between our, our neighbors and all those. We have to share what we have, what Allah give us between our, our neighbors, our compatriots, uh, Cameroonians and all us, we have to be kind, we have to, to, to pray, to participate, like uh, the pilgrimage, the, the, the Muslim who are in Arab Saudi, Mecca to pilgrimage, we have to, to observe the, the fast of the uh, day of Arafat. The eighth al Adha, also known as the Feast of Sacrifice or the Ram, is seen as one of the most important times or celebration in the life of a Muslim faithful, commemorated at the command of Allah in order for them to be closer to Him. Muslim faithfuls in Boya have been intensifying preparations to celebrate this year's Feast of Tabaski in pomp and pageantry, despite the current economic difficulty the South region is facing, as you tell us, Pelagi Ekweni. Celebrated 10 days of Duha Icha, known as the climax of annual Hajj pilgrimage period, is a feast of sacrifice observed by Muslims all over the world. 
According to Muslim worshippers, this piece of sacrifice is a retrospect and a symbolic gesture of Ibrahim's commitment to God when ordered to offer up his only son, Ishmael. Commemorated August 21st, these faithfuls in Boya are set for the event birth for the current economic situation, which stands as a dispirited factor. The prevailing situation uh, with our communities within the northwest and the southwest regions, uh, the, there is difficulty, financial difficulties. Uh, they cannot afford uh, RAM. A lot of parents we contacted, most of them said they will, this year they will, it will not be possible for them to carry out this symbolic gesture. The Imam of the Central Mosque in Boya continued by highlighting the purpose of the slaughtered RAM. It's a sacrifice. Uh, you share it into three parts. One is uh, for the poor, the needy. The second is for your neighbors. And the other part you prepare for your family members to consume. This is what is generally done uh, concerning the meat which is sacrificed on that day. Given the disturbing situation in the northern and southwest regions, these Muslim here further made an appeal for weapons to be dropped and dialogue reinforced. Appealing to these our youth, these are children who are terrorizing the whole place. This it is a moment for us to try, to try and get into ourselves, try to think. Let us, let us think and how far we've gone for two years uh, will paralyze everything. Are we gaining grounds or are losing? Despite the turbulent time faced by these Muslims believers in the Southwest region, they just cannot wait to celebrate this exhilarating feast of Ed Hal Adha come Tuesday, August 21st, 2018. Let's now go to one of the sheep markets here in Douala where we are told that the price of a sheep vary from 50,000 francs to 150,000 francs. Darlene Feger is our guide. Here at Village in the Douala Twin Municipality, as you can see, the main item that is a sacrificial lamb for the Feast of Tabasco is highly available. And most of the ram here present are from Marwan, Gaoundewe, Niger, Central African Republic, and even from Chad. Here at the sheep market, prices of the ram vary from 50,000 to 150,000 francs, depending on the size and the quality. One, one, uh, 150 coming down, you know, there are bigger, there are moderate, there are small ones. Then the 150 from uh, 75 coming to 50, like this one, I can, we can sell it uh, at uh, 50, and 52, 53, something like that. Yes, and due to the bigger, there are like this, like this very one, have you seen it? We can sell it uh, 100 down to the hundred if possible then we take the money yes that is like this one coming to the 50 down to the 50 we can sell it yes we are now waiting for market only this what is happen and the difficulties they face here are enormous uh, especially their location i just coming with the animal then some people that they are stolen their money and they stop them very seriously before the last time we have a general market in this place then the place is occupied by a government and he gives some places to us, but the place is not uh, able to, co to consume all of us. So now we are now in separate place because some of the place are some people's house. They are now driving us to come out from the place. That's the problem we are facing now. Difficulties which they hope will be settled as soon as possible so that they can together settle on one location and sell their ship as a family. Dali Fejo, Gibe Mange, here at the ship market in a village. Thank you very much, Darlene Fajr. Preparations for the Muslim Feast of Sacrifice has reached fever pitch. In many households in Douala, clothing and food have been programmed. But the psychological preparation cannot be undermined, as you tell us, Peter Sose. Muslim faithfuls tell us preparing for the Feast of Sacrifice begins immediately after the Ramadan feast. And with barely 24 hours to the Grand Religious Festival, the preparations have reached fever pitch. Treya Swebu is at work despite the public holiday. However, his mind is stretched back home on tomorrow's feast. In terms of what we call material preparation, it is about what we have to wear. Me personally, I will wear tomorrow what my family entirely will wear and what people will eat and the way we welcome them. It is a similar atmosphere at the home of Hassan Mohamed Singh, where his family is ensuring that visitors have enough to eat. Since we are African, 
we base most on traditional food, like my brother just said. Uh, for the Bamu, you know what we call the fufu uh, and japsha. Uh, maybe for Aousa, they have other uh, traditional meal. You know, it depends on the tradition. And we also try to modernize our meal so that uh, we uh, make the traditional meal and uh, the other modern meal so that everybody to feel free. The success or failure of the feast hinges on the sacrificial animal recommended by the Quran, and that too is taken into consideration one day to D day. Be noted that the first sheep you slaughter has to be uh, shared into three parties. The first now you have to give to the needy or those who are suffering, to the needy or those who are suffering. The second part you actually share with your neighbors and the, uh, your neighbors, and the third now you actually take the third part now to the family. And it is the third part that you actually cook. Either you roast the, the, the meat or you cook it in terms of in any way, then you share with uh, those that visit you. For a hedge free celebration, each family must be psychologically prepared, and that entails everything must be in accordance with the prescriptions of Allah. To uh, sit on the table between the family, now try to ask certain questions that what was, uh, what was done that was not supposed to be, to be done and what do we need to ameliorate uh, next year. As each Muslim family wraps up with the material preparations for the Feast of Sacrifice, they are even more conscious of the spiritual implications of the Feast which honors the fate of Prophet Ibrahim towards Allah. As Muslims do finishing touches against the feast of Ram tomorrow, it is important to know what Ram will be sacrificed and shared with friends and families. Veronica Aji now tells us the Lamb criteria one must take into consideration before going in for a Ram. Harry to Paul. celebrate the feast of sacrifice, one must slaughter a Ram. On offre que ce qui a est de bonne qualité. Imam Daouda Abubakar Labarang insists on the four types that exist, Aris, Bovin, Capril, and Camel, but the Aris is the best choice. Once the choice has been made, other criteria come into play. The sacrificial lamb must be aged between 14 months to one year for the Capril, four years for the Camel, at least two years for the bovine and must be fully one year old for the aries. Also, the lamb must be healthy, not have a broken tusk or rashy skin. Eid al-Adha or Feast of Sacrifice is the second and holiest of the two Muslim holidays. It honors the willingness of Ibrahim, Abraham to sacrifice his son Ishmael as an act of obedience to God's command. To Imam Daouda Abubakar, one must never forget the ram has a soul and must be respected. As such, the sacrificial lamb must not suffer before its death. It is an offering and must be of good quality and pleasing to Allah. In news out of Cameroon, nearly 700 meters above sea level is a cave in Mecca where the Prophet Muhammad is believed to have spent much time in isolated contemplation. Some pilgrims making the annual trip or Hajj to the holy city in Saudi Arabia brave a vertical climb to stand in a mountain top cave where they believe Quranic revelations began. VOA. High atop Al Nur mountain in Mecca is a tiny cave thought to be the birthplace of Islam. It is a grueling climb nearly 700 meters above sea level to the site Muslims believe the Prophet Muhammad often visited. It's indescribable. I mean, it's overwhelming to see that how his impact has been on this world. He's Ramatullah al Alameen, mercy for all the, all the you know, Alameen. But uh, that's where it all started, you know, a very humble thing, you can't even stand there, you know. Hajj is the annual pilgrimage to Islam's holy city of Mecca. It is required of Muslims at least once in their lives. 
The climb to the Cave of Hira is not an official part of that ritual, but for believers it is a trip through time to when Islam first began. We realize that this is a hike that the Holy Prophet ﷺ made regularly, and it's amazing that he and his uh, wife, Hazrat Khadija anha, made this hike regularly at their age, and so you know it gives you extra motivation to push, your, push yourself and get to the top. The trek takes roughly 40 minutes, and true to tradition, most of these climbers are not typically dressed in hiking gear. Average high temperatures this week in Mecca are about 42 degrees Celsius. Well, it's an intense hike, and so, you know, you have to be aware of the, obviously, the temperatures. We got an early start this morning to make sure that we avoided the highest uh, temperatures. Alhamdulillah, there is, a, there is a reasonable path here, but of course you have to be careful of your footing uh, so you don't slip and fall. For those adventurous and able-bodied enough to make the climb, the reward at the top can be nothing short of awesome. Beautiful, actually, when we experience that our prophet actually uh, taken this journey in like this climate, and I was imagining that when it was there was no stairs and everything, how my prophet used to come from all the way from Makkah and here. So I feel very overwhelmed. I can't speak actually like now, and I'm feeling it. Sorry. Muslims believe that it was in this cave atop Al-Nur mountain that the angel Gabriel visited Muhammad and the Quranic revelations began. Hajj this year lasts through Friday evening. More than two million pilgrims are expected to attend. Arash Arbasadi, BOA News. This 8 p.m. English newscast on Spectrum Television is ended. We thank you all for watching. See you tomorrow. Good night. <laughs>